Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Your Daily Dose. We are coming at you from Profit's account. They have graciously allowed us access because we wanted to see what a four-star Date could do. And uh, I feel like it's probably going to be more of a showcase of what a late game account can do with him. The reality is we're going to talk about the pros and cons of running this guy on your team uh, if you're early to mid game and then probably see what he can actually do in a PvP environment. Maybe a little bit of PvE. I did attempt to go and do the tower on this account, but sadly... Even as I got up to floor number, whatever it was, the one before this, um, or the, the, the second one before this one, the team still just one shot. So the beast actually kills everyone, which means it's very awkward. You can't actually showcase what he does in tower, which is a big sad, but that's okay. We did invest five minutes of our life trying to get a fight, but that did not happen. But the reality is we can do some military debate uh, as long as there are over 1150 i think we should be okay so we'll need to go through a couple of those and see some cool teams to fight against but this is really just going to be a quick video to sort of demonstrate uh what this guy can do at higher star levels for those that are free to play and you manage to pull this uh lovely gentleman just be aware he is going to be a tragic story for you early game um, I myself bought him on the shoe account, uh, keyword bought, we could not pull a full copy, so literally bought this guy, um, but the thing is, the thing is, for this, for this one to work, it's pretty, it's pretty sketchy, okay, he has no accuracy, he literally has zero accuracy at zero stars, and he doesn't get any accuracy at all until he hits much, much higher. So if you are ever curious about the hero statistics, you can go into their growth pattern under the info tab. And basically it'll tell you what star level equals what he gets as his talent, which is actually quite important because at four star, which I believe most whales stopped at, he does get a additional skill set and I believe he does get some additional uh, damage bonuses. Now, Attendant is very important for this character. It essentially is a pony that does damage at the end of Date's attack. Um, it gets summoned in the beginning of the battle, but every time Date attacks, it has a chance to proc, and Date has an ability at 4-star to generate a clone. So, for those that are curious... <clears throat> Four star is kind of where this guy becomes viable. Very much viable at end game levels, I would say. Uh, his biggest drawback, his biggest drawback is his lack of accuracy. And as we were probably talking about it, it takes a whopping six stars in order to get that accuracy bonus. So the accuracy that you see from this guy's statistics at 97% is purely from his relics, <laughs> his relic set, and from the ruins and combo charms. So Beast Gear does give accuracy, nor although it, it is pretty risky, I don't know how much accuracy he's actually got from these Beast Gears, probably not a lot, but I do know it is a statistics that isn't too bad. Actually, I don't know if he has any accuracy gear sets, kind of sucks, it is a hard one to get, but then again, most players are rolling for, oh, there we go, we finally won, 3.5% accuracy from that G4 gear set, evasion is up there, attack, it is really just a luck of the dice to get that statistics, mm -hmm. but essentially speaking, it is a hard one to get in total, so ruins are another way to get accuracy, interestingly, you picked one that didn't have accuracy, Hmm, <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional or not. Um, is it, do you actually have any accuracy ruins? Interesting, I know this one has accuracy on it. And there we go, 3% accuracy down there, 3% accuracy there as well. So that's pretty much the only way to get accuracy for Date, which is an impossible task for early game to mid game players. I will repeat, it is an impossible task task for you to get enough accuracy 
to really make him feel like he is a boss. Now, he still hits the target, don't get me wrong, but the biggest issue with this character, and we are talking a lot of cons at the moment, we're going to talk about pros a little bit later on, but the biggest con for this guy is he does summon an attendant. Now, when he summons the attendant, it's going to look like a little pony. Um, that basically mirrors the statistics. It mirrors the statistics of Dante. Okay, so that's very, very important, meaning it actually mimics his accuracy. So if Dante has really low accuracy, like anything below, say, 20%, uh, because as you know, as you progress in the game, heroes and enemy teams start to get accuracy debuffs and evasion buffs, um, pretty much anything under 20%, he pretty much can't hit them. It's roll the dice and hope that the enemy player, that your little beastie targets, doesn't have high evasion, meaning warlord teams are probably going to be a bit of a nightmare. Now, the other thing that I should probably mention is that his CC hits four targets and either burns or freezes meaning he can only do one or the other. He cannot burn and freeze the same target. He can only control one of those out of four, or four of those out of four, or three of those, or two of those. But you get the picture. He really isn't going to be a guaranteed shell shell style freeze. In saying that, we are going to test them out in a second. Let's jump into it. Let me figure out which one it is. Campaign. All right. Military debate. Um, oh, actually, you know what? We could probably do another one as well, which would be good now that I think about it. All right. So we need to make sure that the honor level is over 1,151. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but we can keep rolling. 160, Leo. Okay, let's fight Leo. So at the moment, this is the lineup that we have. We have, of course, Valiant Zhang Fei in slot one. He is running the Serpent Halberd, uh, well not the Serpent Halberd, sorry, the Jade Halberd. But I want to suicide Date. So I want to suicide him. I want to see just how strong he is. Is he going to be able to control all three targets? I assume we go first. Yes, because we have a higher power than this guy. But I want to see. I want to see. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> very interesting i just remembered he's not running the mythic sword so we're actually going to swap that out and i'm going to show you what the mythic sword does on him oh no oh no this is not looking good <laughs> this is not looking good but it's it's okay because this is a showcase it's a test he still survives which is nice um mm, okay all right Get some Warlord action. I think the ultimate team to fight this guy would just put Jiang Wei in slot 1 and he'd kill both uh, Dank Stash and Lu Bei. Or Lu Bu, I should say. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to have some fun with this. We are going to test the round. I do apologize in advance, Prophet. I may mess your account up slightly. Um, I'll try to put it back at the end of the video. So we don't need to watch the rest of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try a more offensive build on Date because I want to see just how strong he is so we are going to take the heavenly sword off you and we're going to put the heavenly sword on him so let's go with this and I forget what co-op you had so I'm going to go with dragon lance because it's the strongest one for those that don't know, when you co-op a stronger, a I guess stronger uh, tier of the weapon, um, you do get better statistics. So we're gonna try this one out. Uh, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna test him out because I kind of want him to go round one. I want him to go round one, so I am currently testing on my other account too, just to see whether or not. Uh, we can get that guaranteed ultimate off for the freeze because <clears throat> that's kind of important. So he summons his attendant, which is the pony in the back. Can we get a freeze? Let's see. We got a frozen. Yep. And we got stunned. Great. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. We got stunned because of the Zai's charm. Interesting. Hmm. I don't like our odds of winning this one. Well, actually, my odds my odds increased the minute we killed one of them. Uh, 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 he's still frozen though. That's that's a positive. So he can control lock for two rounds, which is uh, we are going to say that that's definitely a positive for old mate Darte because again, uh, locking out a hero for two rounds is pretty big in this. Um, well, I think in any meta it's pretty big, but late game meta being able to lock them out for two rounds is pretty huge. He did die from the reflect from the charm, actually killed him, which was interesting. So if you don't know, uh, the Zaya's charm has an ability to reflect damage back based on HP percentage of the hero that's got it equipped. And of course, Pixiu also has a reflection, which I believe may have just killed him or it could have been Zaya's charm yet again. I think we should be okay. We should be okay to win this fight, which is fine. But I'm going to keep testing. I want to keep seeing 148, so we need to roll again. Try rolling another one. Okay, that's terrible. I don't want to go through all your gold, but uh, we're going to have to take Dai Chow on. We're going to have to take that on. We need to get over 150. 1150, that's, that's our goal. But anyway, let's shut up. Let's see if he can actually freeze three targets, because that would mean he's super OP. Yes, he did get one. Very nice. Very, very nice. It's almost like you kind of want to run him with the ultimate round one. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. And his clone keeps attacking as well, which is huge. Unfortunately, I can't see his clone anywhere on the screen, which kind of sucks. There's no, um, there's no visual cue for that. Is there any visual cue for his clone? Because it should summon after his ultimate ability, but it does not. Interesting. Interesting. Is he strong? Is he strong? I don't think it's a question of is he strong. I think it's a question of rotation. Because if you are thinking about running this guy, you aren't, honestly, you, you want him to be slot one. You really do want him to be slot one with that mythic sword. Otherwise, he he's more of a support hero. <laughs> That's my impression at the moment. Um, oh yeah, let's go. 160. Let's see if we can get this guy again. Leo, let's see if we can freeze any of Leo's. Uh, I, I, <clears throat> That's another problem too, because obviously if you're running uh, against Thunder Ponies, he's not going to have the Thunder Pony. He does get almost like a guaranteed freeze, which is good. Locking them out of the attack early on is pretty significant. He is squishy, however. I will say that on both the shoe account and, uh, as you can probably tell, profits account, he really can't take a big hit, uh, which is a shame. It is a shame, but he really is there to get that CC off round one. I don't know if he's one of those heroes that's going to carry you, <laughs> I don't think he's going to be a carry hero, ladies and gentlemen, for those that are thinking of building him later on. Maybe at 7 star, he's going to get a little bit more tankier because he's going to get the damage reduction at 5 star. Uh, for those, make sure you always check the Bloodline Talent Tree as well. It'll tell you at what star level the hero actually gets some bonuses. But yeah, 5 star, he's going to get 45% damage reduction, which is nice. Um, that could be viable. It could be a viable thing. I think we lose this fight. I think we lose this one. Yeah, he got seduced. It's all over. Dank Stash, by the way, with the seduction charm is the, well, seduction tactic is the best hero in the game at the moment. I'm unbiased. I'm, I'm just speaking facts. Dank Stash, seven star with the mythic sword and the seduce is going to kill pretty much 99% of all teams in the 3vv environment. He's going to be very, very hard to kill. So you pretty much have to control him straight off the bat. Uh, yeah, look at him. He just carries. 
That is why I love my dank stash. Uh, but we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep showcasing. Hopefully, hopefully we can get that early game freeze. I want to see his attendant do some solid damage. Um, so for anyone that is interested, when you look at the damage statistics of Date, he incorporates his summoned attendant as well. Oh, we did not get any freezes off. Oh, that's not going to be good. He's going to die. Oh, that's not good. I might try. Uh, I might try some different slots to see if he can stay alive a little bit longer. We did manage to win that one, which is cool. But obviously, we did lose initially. What can we roll? I don't want to waste too much of your gold, but come on, just give us a top one. It really does not want to. It just wants to give us this one. Let's go fight him. Uh, maybe we can. Uh, maybe we can get lucky again. Maybe we can get lucky. Get a high roll on that froze. We did get. Oh, we did. We actually high rolled. Very cool. Too bad we could not do that against Leo. <laughs> that kind of sucks. Uh, but yeah, he's um, he's definitely going to take the place of Chow Chow on a lot of teams. I can definitely see that. Oh, double frozen. Yeah, game over. So this is sort of uh, a good indicator, right? You kind of want to see this every single fight. But as you can tell, it doesn't actually always happen, which kind of sucks. But I do think that running him with Heaven's Sword is going to be the game changer for anyone that is thinking of building him. I'd almost say it would be a waste not to run it on him. As you can probably tell, his Rage ability does not have a huge proc chance of I, I just feel like he doesn't do too much with his Rage ability. Now, I know he can chain his Rage abilities because, obviously, he just went twice in a row. That was his clone attacking. And, of course, his Assassin attacks after it. So, round two is kind of where he pops off. He can stay alive till round two. He, as you could probably just tell, he did kind of pop off just then, which is pretty good. Pretty good. You, you really do need to run him with that Evan Sword, though. I'm going to keep saying that. For anyone that's that's curious, keep running him with the Heaven Sword if you can. All right, so we do need to roll because it is under uh, Prophet's threshold of one. There we go. Let's go again with this guy. Now, I will try to run him in slot. I'm going to try I'm going to try this. I'm going to try and uh, be a little bit more creative. We're going to go Jang Wei to try to tie up uh, Dank Stash with the Taunt. And then we're going to see what he does in slot two. Honestly, Jiang Wei is just a beast. I love him. <laughs> I changed my mind. Puppet Shu becomes an absolute monster as you star him up. Um, my initial assessment's only... Oh, no, he died. He died straight away. My initial assessment is, unfortunately, most mythic heroes only start to shine as they get starred up. So the sad reality is if you are going to get a mythic hero, don't expect it to do phenomenal damage at base star or one star. It kind of starts to shine at around three stars with the damage increase. And of course, at five stars with the damage reduction, uh, that's when things really start to kick off. So if you're thinking about building any sort of mythic hero, I would say, rec well, I would recommend Focus on getting at least one of them to 5-star. Five 5-star five is actually big for the Mythics because that damage reduction combined with Bloodline against other legendary heroes is huge. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Bloodline essentially cuts down the control chance and the damage from non-Mythic heroes to a Mythic target. Meaning if you get to 5-star, it's automatically a 45% damage reduction plus all of the bloodline statistics stacking up. So basically, Lubu hits like a wet noodle, uh, and Chow Chow fails to control you. Does that sound good? I think that sounds phenomenal. All right, so we did lose that out. Unfortunately, Diang Wei was not clutch enough to kill Lubu or taunt them, and that is absolutely A-OK. -okay. Let's jump into it. Let's skip ahead, and let's go back to our original setup with this guy, slot one. Um, we're going to go slot one, slot two. Let's try this. I'm sorry. I keep messing up your formation profit. I will forget to change it. I know me already. 
I already know I'm going to forget to change this up, but I am enjoying myself. Let me know in the comment section down below, how are you running Zate? Are you using them? Are you using Hojo? How's Hojo going? I am curious to know, just because nobody really would build him. Oh no, no CCs. That's, that's never a good thing. Oh, that's never a good thing. Interestingly enough, Zayas Charm does proc quite a lot of damage. Um, oh, got wiped. <laughs> oh no, we got wiped out. That was a that was a strong attack. And he's coming in clutch having that Jade Halberd though. I feel like if this guy had a Jade Halberd, we would be screwed. Uh we would be in a, a in we I don't think you'd be able to build him if he had a uh, beat him if he had a Jade Halberd. Um it would be very very difficult. Very difficult. And he got seduced. Oh man, that is such that is such an OP ability, that seduce. Alright, let's just skip that. We're gonna keep trying. We're gonna go back to our original formation. <laughs> just gonna keep playing around here. Uh what was it like? I think you did it like this. Alright, let's just try this one. Last fight, maybe we get that W. Make it count, PB. Heavenly Sword versus Heavenly Sword. Let's get a CC off. Hmm. Yes, we got a Frozen. That's what we like to see. We almost killed him uh, with the... We, oh, he got stunned, damn it. He, we almost killed him with the Attendant, which was pretty cool. We also stunned the uh, dank stash as well. So this we, we're in a, we, we're in with a shot. <laughs> we have a shot to kill them now. Yes, yes, there we go. Lovely, love to see that. The old Jade Halberd doing the triple attack damage to all of the targets. Sometimes you get lucky and you high roll. Sometimes you don't get lucky. Um, but we did get lucky with that one. Very, very cool. We'll finish these off in a second. None of you have that weapon. I can see none of you have the halberd. Nope. So you must have skipped out there. Leo decided not to buy it. Well, uh, next uh, next time, I feel like if he runs the halberd, he's going to be a very hard uh, team to kill. Very, very hard team to kill. <sighs> have to wait for Annihilation event. All right, skip ahead with there. Congratulations, GG, on that one. So, still doing some fairly solid damage for a one-round turn. Is this guy viable? I feel like that's the question that most players want to ask. Most players are thinking, you know, do I roll the dice? Because, to be completely honest with you, you do need to be on a higher tier account that has access to accuracy based relics and of course the ruins as well but as you progress to that it isn't a terrible idea to have him in the wings even if you don't initially run him straight away if you're still building your legendary team up um, that is completely understandable he's going to help your index score no doubt um, if you are thinking of it just from an index base go grab him go get hojo in the next one or alternate but if you are going to build him, just be aware he does have that limitation. He isn't a guaranteed control hero and his statistics are based off his, uh, well, his attendance statistics are based off his character. So you do have to sink some uh, effort. What I'm trying to get at is this guy is definitely a Whaley type of hero. You certainly need to run Imperishable Gear Set on him for his affinities. You do need to have both relics for his affinities as well, for those that are interested. His affinities are very much the same as the main, main character, so your MC, um, who has open affinities. So basically, you just need to run either or of his relic sets to maximize that. And of course, his imperishable gear sets give him the best bonuses as well. Um, you really, yeah, you really need to run in with this sword. <laughs> Heavenly Sword is where it's going to be at for Old Mate Date. You want him to do that round one frozen. You want him to pretty much control the enemy team. Um, and then hopefully he stays alive long enough for him to do his rage uh, attack and summon his clones. I do see him being a bit of a beast when he gets the seven star, but that's easier said than done. 
For those that are curious about the hero returning, if you're thinking, oh, PB, I don't know, like, I don't want to spend any money. I don't want to get trapped like last time. I hear you. I got trapped on so... <laughs> I think I got... No, well, I was going to say so many accounts. I only got trapped... Well, technically, I got trapped on two. So I built Moto Chica to seven star, which was very expensive. And I got stuck with a four star Tokugawa. I also got stuck with a three star Sun Sin. Um... Yeah, it, it sucks. I'm not going to lie. It really sucks that the game development team has not incorporated any of the new currencies back. I don't know if you have any chilling in your bag. Uh, you do. You have 277 of them. That's absolutely disgusting that they have not returned the legendaries to the time pool. For those that are looking to build them truly from index perspectives, of course, Unfortunately, legendary heroes have gone past their use by date. So technically speaking, you'd only be building them uh, for their indexes. But like I said, you don't want to get trapped out. Like a lot of players made that mistake of hoarding the currency and then realized, oh crap, the time heroes are not coming back. So yeah, there is going to be that one. Look, I'm going to speculate. Uh, don't hold me to it. <laughs> don't come at me. But I believe the limited time heroes and the time heroes events are probably going to be coinciding. So we are going to see them at least twice a month. I want to say minimum once a month. Um, is that going to be enough for you to build Date to four star as a free to play player? No, it's probably not going to be enough. I'm not going to lie to you. It cost me about $100. It took me 143 pulls to get Date to zero stars. Yeah, that's right. 143 pulls to get him to zero stars on my shoe account. I did not get a full copy. I believe Denial got one full copy after three. 300 pulls and he managed to scrape in and get him to four star as well the drop rate is dismally low so you will be throwing buckets of cash at them uh if you're a free-to-play player pick one stick to it or try to get both indexes and don't use them that's really your options is you either build date up to a minimum four star to use him because he's not going to be viable outside of that uh, for obvious reasons, he doesn't get his clone ability, which is going to be his major damage increase. Or you just build them for the index, um, have a bit of a chuckle, post up on Facebook that you managed to get them off like a single pull, because I love to see that. I know the community does as well. And just call it a day. But if you are a serious player, if you're a serious well, or classify yourself as a Megalodon, Dante to seven star is going to be a game changer. I can probably just, uh, I can say that with all certainty, he's going to break uh, a lot of the meta for those that are versing seven star Dante's later on. You're going to see that a lot. You're going to be versing a lot of Dante's at seven star. So if you want to be relevant, probably need to build him, probably need to whale out. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, if you'd like to see more content, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, notification button. We will be covering in depth, in depth, the other lovely mythic tactics in a separate video. We are going to be buying them out and uh, talking a little bit about the value and of course the relevance of that next Celebrate Festival. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks again, Profit, for letting me use your account.